Your Excellencies, Monseigneur, uh, distinguished delegates and uh, friends, and ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the Permanent Mission of Hungary and uh, uh, Ambassador Kathleen Bogai for organizing, and along with all the, those who contributed to this organization, uh, to organize this timely event on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the United Nations, and only a few days before the leaders of the world will convene here in New York in order to adopt the post-2015 development agenda. This celebration, this uh, commemoration, and this event also brings us uh, back to the 70 that we celebrate, to the, to the idea that we celebrate the 70 years of the, uh, the, uh, the United the Foundation of the United Nations uh, that were uh, uh, founded in order to protect the world from the scourge of war and to foster peace, security, and human rights among nations and countries, and to create a better world where peace and reconciliation would prevail. And although it would be unfair uh, not to acknowledge the progress made throughout the past uh, decades, we must admit, however, that much more needs to be done in order to address the challenges that keep emerging. We still live in an imperfect world, and today we are witnessing still uh, uh, problems that uh, we see every day, and we witness the rise of intolerance, mistrust, discrimination, exclusion, and violent extremism. Minorities are attacked for their religion, ethnic identity, beliefs, on many other grounds. We are shocked and horrified by the massive violation of human rights, the unprecedented destruction of monuments of worship and cultural heritage. Centuries-old, multi-ethnic and multi-confessional communities are threatened with extinction. Refugees in desperate search of, shel of shelter fall victims of racism, ill-treatment, and trafficking. The challenges that we now face are certainly different from those 70 years ago. Because today we live in a, in a different world. We live in an interconnected world where global challenges can be addressed only through collective action. International challenges request international solutions. Nonetheless, no international organization, no community of nations, no coordinated effort could prove to be successful when trust and understanding are absent. Because conciliation of interests may bring a pause, not peace, but simply a standoff. It is durable and reliable, but because durable and reliable peace depends on shared identity and destiny. Yet, is it possible to speak about shared values without sharing a common understanding of the meaning of values? In this turbulent international landscape, and mounting <clears throat> challenges, we need to enhance our focus on the value of human dignity, <coughs> the respect of the other, the tolerance for the different. And we need to renew the quest to find unity in diversity. Culture, word, and concept derive from the Latin, from the Roman term, cholera, that is, to cultivate, to take care to tend and to preserve. It relates primarily to the relation of man, human beings, with nature in the sense of cultivating and tending. The sense of developing nature as a dwelling place for people, as well as taking care of the monuments of the past, determined until today the content and the meaning we have in mind when we speak about culture. And this idea relates to all nations, all religions and communities, regardless of history or identity. A good example, a perfect, you might say, or might some say, could be found in ancient Greek literature. The ancient Greek tragedy goes beyond any given time and location and presents a humanistic and universal approach that deserves the term classical. When the tragic poet refers to war, 
It is not in the epic tone of celebrating a victory, but in the philosophical approach of evaluating its impact on human life and dignity. Classical literature is indeed a priceless source for seeking universal values, as well as benchmarks of acceptance of the other. Cultural diversity provides a fertile ground for constructive dialogue. And after the excellent presentation of uh, Dr. Mark uh, Donfried, I will only re reiterate that through intercultural dialogue and uh, cultural diplomacy, nations can find the common ground to address the challenges facing the international community as a whole. In this regard, intercultural dialogue is instrumental both at national and at international level. The task is not a matter of putting in place a new system of international relations, but to find a means of building trust and solidarity, of mobilizing our forces in reaching out to each other, of avoiding a modern version of old prejudices, and of inventing a common effort to rescue what is our common heritage. Intercultural dialogue is by definition a dialogue between equal partners and requires the need for the respect of the interlocutor, the respect of the other. <clears throat> it is therefore an instrument that can ensure the harmonious interaction among different peoples and groups in our increasingly diverse societies. At national level, it contributes to social cohesion, development, <coughs> and prosperity, while at international, it promotes peace and cooperation. Over the last years, our, the international community has realized the added value of intercultural dialogue and relevant stakeholders have been active in taking initiatives. Resolutions have been adopted by the General Assembly, conferences have been organized, and a number of states have promoted national initiatives. UNESCO has assumed the lead in many related projects, including the launch of the International Decade for the Approachment of, the approachment of Cultures the Alliance of Civilizations, the Anna Lind Foundation, and the King of Dalla International Center provide valuable platforms for promoting understanding across different communities. In this context, we should not omit to mention the interfaith dialogue as a vital component of intercultural dialogue in the broad strategy of fighting radicalization and violent extremism. Religious leaders can play a crucial role in building bridges for trust and understanding. And in this, it is in this framework, and we also should commend the, uh, this role of the two leaders of the, the, of the two, the leaders of the two sister churches of Rome, the Holy See and, uh, uh, and Istanbul, the Patriarchate of Constantinople, that have taken concrete steps and initiatives supporting, among other causes, the peaceful coexistence between Christians and Muslims in the Middle East, as well as efforts promoting environmental awareness. Greece, my country, is at the crossroads of three continents and has always shared the view that intercultural dialogue is an ideal means for strengthening ties of friendship and solidarity among peoples of different backgrounds. Today that our immediate neighborhood is shattered by numerous crises, we are convinced that intercultural dialogue should be strengthened as a means to address contemporary complicated challenges. Issues such as integration of immigrants and building peace in multi-ethnic states cannot be effectively addressed without aspects of, of cultural pluralism, mutual respect, religious tolerance, and fight against xenophobia. In line with the overall European policy to combat racism and discrimination, Greece has initiated various projects for the integration of immigrants aimed at promoting community activities and cultural integration. Social exclusion and racism have no position in viable democratic societies and by no means contribute to development and stability. It is in this context that uh, the initiative to convene an international conference on religious and cultural pluralism and peaceful coexistence in the Middle East is con that is, is convened, has been taken and is convened in Athens in October. 
the conference will conf focus on the elaboration of efficient ways to protect the rights and fundamental freedoms of all religious and cultural entities in the Middle East. Well, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the cultural dialogue is the key to fight the rise of violent extremism that threatens the foundations of our peaceful and democratic societies. We should spare no tool available. Interreligious meetings, civil society dialogue, academic and cultural exchanges, proper education and mobilization of the younger generations should be our counter narrative to the uh, forces of hatred and intolerance. Let us not forget that every destruction of cultural heritage in Iraq, in Syria, and elsewhere in the world targets not only the cultural diversity of those communities, but also the foundations of our civilization and violates our basic right to cultural heritage. As UNESCO, UNESCO Director General has affirmed, Cultural diversity is another way to affirm human dignity and human rights. And it is because it is based on these principles and these values that cultural di culture, intercultural dialogue and cultural diplomacy can contribute to a better world. Thank you very much.